Hello, uh, welcome to another uh, session of Houdini training. My name is Gianvito Serra and today we're going to be learning about uh, VETS. Um, uh, VETS, which stands for Vector Expression, is a high performing language inside of Houdini, which is uh, very powerful and very fast. It's uh, one of the Again, one of the things that I feel makes uh, working in Houdini uh, very efficient and makes it such a powerful package. Um, beautiful thing about the VETS expression language is that it is as performant as potentially, uh, as performant as most uh, C++ or C code. I mean, the program, the language itself is based on C, but it runs under a very efficient uh, CMD architecture, which stands for single instruction, multiple data. It's a type of architecture that which allows you to operate in massive parallel, uh, massively in parallel. Uh, it allows you to say, for example, take, you know, hundreds of points at once and do an operation on them, then take another hundreds of points, an operation on them, and then do the next operation and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's what supercomputers used to do back in the day, uh, which is now available at our fingertips to operate inside of uh, Houdini data. Um, Although it is a language, uh, it is not a scripting language per se. Uh, you wouldn't use VET for, say, for example, writing a script which creates nodes or writing a script which, you know, creates a UI or something like that. VET is simply to be able to operate on data uh, that is streaming to the actual Houdini graph, okay? In the, the type of data that it operates on can be any type of data. Uh, the beautiful thing about the VETS language, it is available in every single context of Houdini. Uh, you can use VETS inside of COPS for manipulating images. You can use VETS inside of uh, SOPS to manipulate geometry. You can use VETS inside of CHOPS to manipulate uh, your animation data or audio and everything like that. It is available in every single part of Houdini. Um, the, in regards to geometry, you can operate on anything. You can operate on polygons, primitives, uh, sorry, on points, primitives, vertices, volumes, etc., etc. Um, the beautiful thing about that as, this as well is that it is a language that can, is, it's, can be done in code, like you would, but you can also do it using nodes as well. So it makes it so that anybody who, you don't have to know how to do scripting, in order to be able to do st uh, very powerful operations which are as fast as some of the stuff that people write in C++ code. Seems crazy to believe, but I mean, this is something that I have experienced for many years and I have, you know, manipulated uh, scan uh, you know, billions of points with that, so I've manipulated scan data with it, and it's incredibly high performing, you know, and most of it, and I am by no means a, you know, a low level programmer of any sorts. Uh, it is definitely just a means for it, for you know, being able to express your ideas into, you know, in a very very fast uh, fashion. Okay. So just to demonstrate that a little bit, I am gonna show you a simple thing that we can do with it. Okay. So this is Houdini's default uh, squab. Uh, you can actually get one of those by simply just going to test geometry, and we have a few things that we can use here. Our pig head, which you see in some of these, we have a rubber toy and the actual squab, which is, I think, a squid and a crab or something like that. But anywho, it's a pretty interesting model. But what we can do with this squab is that we can actually, I'm going to show you how we can actually use a uh, vets to actually do some modifications to the squab. Okay. So what we're going to do is that we're going to drop a point block. So it's not a point sub, it's a point vop, okay? All right, so I'm gonna highlight it, and you will notice that nothing happens to begin with, okay? Um, we're not gonna worry too much about the UI right now. All that we really care about is what's going on inside of this guy. All right, so if we double click on the point vop to go inside, you will notice that my network view looks quite different than it did from before. All of a sudden I have nodes that look nothing like the nodes that I had before. Uh, and most importantly, you actually wire from left to right versus in the surface operator context with right wire from top to bottom. Whoops, and look at that, I disconnected. So I'll explain why. The reason why is because 
on the actual surface contents or any of the high level contents of Houdini, you are doing high level operations, okay? You are bringing a whole geometry as a node, you are doing an extrude as a whole node, you are doing a, uh, you know, a loft as a single node, you know, you're, you're creating attributes, but you're creating them, you know, with nodes that are actually very specialized to do a particular task, okay? The VOB context is much, much more general, okay? It is a lot like a programming language, okay? Where these little wires represent variables going from the beginning all the way to the end, okay? So we're not anymore thinking about, oh, this is the geometry traveling through here. Here we're thinking about individual variables actually traveling to the actual, you know, through the actual code, okay? If we look at even some of the operations that we have here, we have a lot of operations which are very low level, like math, like low level math operations. Uh, even, you know, matrix multi multiplications and manipulations, stuff related to linear algebra. Uh, some vector operations that we can do and some volumetric stuff. Uh, we still have some geometry controls, you know, but it's always very low level uh, operations that we can do, okay? It's a, look at this as a way for you to write no, your own nodes without having to do any scripting, okay? Or to do very minimal scripting in some cases. Um, so anytime that you actually create a VOP network like this, you can always come back here and right click on your VOP node and go to view VETS code. And that will show you the actual code that Houdini is writing on the fly every time that we create any kind of VETS operation, okay? Although this code looks very crazy to begin with, uh, the comp when it is compiled and processing the runtime, it's actually incredibly efficient. I mean, you can use code this crazy or, you know, or more minimal, it will still process quite fast. Um, it will make very little difference in that sense. But, so what we can do here is because we actually are able to wire things from an input to an output, we're able to do quite a few things, okay? So in this particular case, for example, I'm grabbing this thing that is a P and V and the P. Now, one thing that you will notice is that this looks a lot like attributes. Okay, so we'll learn a little bit about attributes. And if you look at some of the names of these little variables that are coming through, like CD, for example, these are pretty much like attributes. Okay, you can look at VETS in geometry context or VOPs in the geometry context as a means to operate on attributes, if you will. Okay. So what we can come, what can we do? So in this case, we're doing nothing. But say, for example, we wanted to grab the position, and we wanted to add a multiply node. I'm gonna add a multiply here, okay? And I'm gonna fit the position into this, okay? Now you notice that a multiply takes multiple inputs, okay? In this particular case, it's waiting for an input too. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drop another node called a constant, okay? So the constant allows me to drop in a single value, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter what the value is, you can set it right here. This is a lot like if you're actually making a shader inside of Unreal, where you will actually be able to come in here and actually do, uh, you know, set a constant color, for example. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to set a value of 0.5, and I'm going to feed that into the multiply. Okay, you'll notice that nothing is happening right now because I really, this is going nowhere. I mean, I have a product here, which is a combined value, but it won't do anything until I feed it into something. Okay, so in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna grab the product and I wanna feed it into the position. And now notice that my uh, squad got smaller. And as I play with the constant, you'll notice that my squad is getting bigger and smaller on the fly as we're actually changing this value, okay? Very cool. Now, here is something a little bit more interesting. So what happens if we, instead of wiring the position to the P, or the output of the product to the P, we actually wire it with this connect this, and we actually wire it to the color. Now check it out. Now what we actually get is that the position of the actual mesh is driving the color of a mesh, okay? So, and if I play with the multiplier, you will notice that the color is indeed changing. If I come out here, 
and I put a transform node. Oops. And start playing with the position. You will notice that my colors are actually changing on the fly. That's the beautiful thing about VETS, it's like it computes just like anything else, it computes in real time. But what I just did here is that without writing a single line of code, I made my own operator type, which automatically maps the color to the position for me, and there is some a multiplication, okay? So it's very cool uh, and very powerful. Uh, we can even take, for example, the normals, and instead fit that into the color, okay? And now what we get here is basically a object a world space normal map of my actual squad. Likewise, we can fit that into the actual input of my product and do the same operation here. And you will notice that now I have a normal multiplier that I created here. Very cool. Now say for example, I didn't want to have to dive into the actual VOP node. And instead I wanted to actually use, say for example, a so for example, I wanted to use a constant. And now instead of a constant, it's an actual parameter. We can do so. We can type parameter. And feed the parameter into this. Okay. And we're going to color parameter multiplier. Multiplier. Label is going to be multiplier. If we go to the top, you will notice I now have a multiplier parameter which I created, which allows me to change the value on the fly here. You'll notice that it actually runs even faster. That's because at this point we're not recompiling the code every time. We're simply running the actual, uh, changing a parameter on a compiled node. Okay? Very cool. Um, we can also bring in arbitrary attributes into the VETS context. So for example, say I come here and I say, um, I throw an attribute create. And I want to create a new attribute called my attribute. And I want that attribute to be the translate y, which is as big as you see there, divided by the y max. Okay, so basically is the translate position on the y divided by the maximum of a y, which is giving me kind of like a ratio, if you will. Okay? Go inside. Oh, actually, before I go inside, just to show you, if I'm middle mouse here, I have the attribute that I just created called my attribute. Okay, if I go inside, I can bring it in and actually use it inside of my network. So I can say bind, which allows me to bind an attribute out of uh, one that, that is already in the geometry. In this case, I want to bring in my attribute. Okay, and what I want to do is that I want to then grab this and actually fit that into the color. Look at what we have here. Basically have a gradient that shows the actual Y position normalized, okay? So 40 points obviously that fall into the negative. Very cool. Now, say for example, I wanted to write an attribute. You can also do that with that. Say for example, I wanted to grab the normal with a multiplier and write it instead into an attribute. Instead of actually feeding to the color, I can do so by using a bind export. So the bind export node takes then the output of a VETS network and fits it into an attribute. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, multiplied normal. Okay. And I'm going to make it a vector since it's actually three floats coming through. And if we go out to the top and we go to see the spreadsheet, you'll notice that now I have a new point that we call my multiplied vector or my multiplied normal. Okay. And if I play with the slider, you will notice that my VETS operation is still giving me the multiplied normal as a brand new attribute which I created using VETS. Okay. If you look careful here, you will notice too that we have little different color-coded uh, boxes here, okay? If you roll over the box, you will notice it tells you what the actual attribute name is or the variable name that you're passing is, but it will tell you the actual type as well. So this is a vector, for example. 
the age one if you look is like a darker green is actually a float the blue one here is actually an int and the op input one here which is the first input of the node is actually op input one which is an actual string the path to the first input all the little different boxes color coded boxes represent a different data type you can sometimes feed different color boxes together like you can you get a dotted line like this because what Houdini will do behind the scenes is actually do casting but you don't have to do that you know you can always do an explicit cast you know so say for example in this case I just wanted the red color of the P P1 modifier by the height I can do a float to vector and fill the first input into this and then set the two values to 0 and 0 which they are by default and feed that into this and now we get the actual red and we can even add green if we want to here you will see the actual colors change there it's a lot of for example noise operations that we can do so let's say for example add a little bit of a, a little bit of let's see curl noise and take my position feed that into the position here and get a little bit of noise actually happening well in this case a lot because we have a lot of amplitude but we can basically use this to also modify geometry like we we are able to see here yeah, okay, this again gets a little bit closer to our actual squab here that we have it before but reduce the frequency even a little bit and you can see how very quickly we can actually modify geometry using that very cool now in addition to operating on geometry, such as points, VETS can also operate, say, for example, on primitives. Okay. This, uh, whoops, sorry, one node. What I wanted to drop in here was actually a primitive VOP. Okay, so it's just like the point VOP. It said it actually operates on primitives. So if we look in here. Similar to how we did before, we can grab a primitive normal, for example and feed it into the primitive color okay but you will notice that now we get more of a faceted look because we're actually adding colors to the actual primitives okay but we can for example grab the primitive normal and then compare and then get the edge component so by saying get vector component compare compare if the actual vector component is less than zero okay so this is basically getting let's actually look at the y okay so let's delete every face that I, every face that is actually pointing down so we're going to look at the y component of the vector of the normals of the primitives okay which we can see here we're going to compare to see if it's less than zero and if it is true i'm going to put an if then block and i'm going to pass a primitive number that i'm processing okay so let's look at that very carefully passing the normal here and getting the component y and comparing to see that y component is less than zero and this is going to tell me if it's true or false and if it's true this little if is gonna run what is inside of this actual node so I'm gonna actually pass a primitive number here and then I'm gonna be inside of the if node and I'm gonna say remove primitive okay and I'm gonna give you the primitive number that I actually found and there we go so what's happening here is that I'm actually looking at the normal and then taking the y component of the normal okay comparing if it's less than zero and if it is I'm passing this condition to this block and what this block does is that it will run only this sub block if the condition on the top is met and in this case it's actually removing a primitive <coughs> very cool so a little bit about primitives and then look if we actually come here and transform it oops no, I mean to do trace I mean to do and this one you 
can see that as we rotate, any, pr any primitive that is facing down is going to be deleted on the fly. Oops. Very cool. Alright, giving another quick demonstration, I'm going to drop a COP, no COP network, COP2 network, which if you guys remember from previous lessons, is where we can actually come and actually do image type operations. And I'm going to switch to my composite view, and I'm going to use a file COP to bring my a file, my image. And what I'm going to do here is use a VOP COP filter. Okay, which is similar to the VOPs that we just saw, but actually operate on images. Okay, and for example, we can grab the we can grab, for example, the pixel horizontal position. Okay, we divided. You see, do, 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 do. pixel horizontal position, and we divided by the actual resolution on the edge to get a gradient of the that goes from black to white here or black to gray in this case I think probably because I'm actually using the wrong thing let me see oh, pixel horizontal coordinate, that's what I want Oh, perhaps no. Oh, I need to actually convert them to floats because I need this ultimately to be a float. So we do integer to float. And we do the same thing here. Now that gives us a gradient that goes from 0 to 1. Let's go ahead and turn on turn off linearization. <coughs> and we can set. So in this particular cop operation, what I'm doing is I'm taking the pixels edge position and then in the edge resolution and then I'm dividing the edge position by the edge resolution which gives me basically a value from 0 to 1 depending on where the pixel is on the edge and then I'm feeding that back into the RGB channels of this I can for example leave the R channel alone and now I get a combination of my red of I can even get like a blue gradient on top of this so point to show here is that we can basically do use that on VOPs in any place that we want. Uh, it is a language that is pretty open-ended. We can even, for example, if we go back to the surface operators, okay, and we look at a little pig here, we can use VEDS to create materials. So I'm gonna create a material shop. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna open a shop net operation. And I'm gonna create a, use a material. So I'm gonna do material shader builder. This is what it's called. Let me try that again, just to show a little bit more carefully. So material shader builder will create an empty material for us, which is surprise, surprise, with an invert to apply to any mesh. So for example, we can very we can do this accent thing where we feed the position to the color on the output. And then if we assign this material to the actual pig head by using the material VOP sub. Let me just show that again really quick as well. So we use a material operator to assign a material. Now it's very important to understand that the material sub assigns materials. It doesn't actually create materials, okay? The materials are created inside of a shop net. So if we click here and browse over to the shop net, we can click on the web material. Now this thing will have a material assigned that I just created. And if I render it, you notice that uh, my actual pig is colorized based on the actual position of the render of the sample. Okay, we can, for example, convert this to convert this to world space by using a transform uh, by using a transform VOP, taking the position and going from this space to world space, and then feeding that to the color. And then we can see what we actually get here. So it's a very powerful way to, uh, it's a context that is powerful because the moment that you actually learn VETS or VOPS, you can pretty much use it anywhere you want. Uh, 
you will know how to make very complex shaders, you will know how to make very complex image operators, you will be able to process audio with this, uh, and it's all really the same looking operation types. Um, so, just to have another example really quick, I'm gonna also bring use a texture pop, which also allows us to assign a texture to an object. Oh, here render again. This particular one I don't think has UVs, which is probably why you actually see a pig on every face. Let's actually add some UVs. Uh, UV and wrap. Let me see. We well, have UV and wrap, which creates UVs. And then we can bring those UVs here to actually modify the Actual, let me see, to, add, to actually affect the coordinates of the texture that we are seeing on the screen. There we go. There we go. So again, same operations that you will do to actually do, uh, to actually do geomet modifying geometry, we can use to simply modify create shaders, we can use it to create modify images, etc, etc. Okay. We can also do similar operations or equivalent operations using also code-based versions of these operators. So if we use a point triangle, we can do the exact same thing that we're doing here, but we can use it using code, which in some cases is actually easy, easier than actually writing nodes, but I feel like the actual node networks are a great way to actually learn. And once you actually get more familiar and more comfortable with using the nodes, I mean, it's very easy to start picking up how to actually write some of these things in code like this. But it's the nice thing about this is that it's very nice to sometimes be able to get a very speedy uh, setup going using this way. And if you wanted to add the, so for every op node that we have here, we have for it a wrangle node that we can use. So primitive wrangle would be the equivalent of the primitive up. Okay, the exact same thing. And we can even, if you want to, find some examples here by look, clicking on this little drop down here and actually picking an actual one of these examples that you have here. And that will actually create some code here. Some of this code I think is actually probably optimized for points, which is why it looks like this. You can see, you can come in here and actually start learning a little bit about how to actually write vets by just using those little shortcuts there. Okay. And I think that should be it for this lesson. I would feel we cover plenty for uh, to get started. Uh, my name is Janvito Serra and thank you for watching. Uh, we'll have further lessons on vets uh, continuing on a little later.